One of the things that I remember about my mother when I was no more than five years old, that she'd meticulously color in um, all of the picture books with brown magic marker so that when I read books, the, what I saw was people who looked like me. You spoke about a 20, 25 year struggle to be heard, about rejections and disappointments. I think that as an artist, you have to sort of oscillate between grandiosity and despair. And in those grandiose moments are the ones in which you really face down all of the demons and you face down the people who tell you can't do it. And it's um, in, when you're in despair, you have to figure out how you resurrect yourself. You know, and particularly for a, a playwright, during my early years, it's like every day was an act of resurrection, in which I got up, I looked in the mirror, and I said, you can do this, even though repeatedly I was told that there wasn't space for me on the landscape. The only person I had to encourage me was myself. I think that that's one of the difficulties now, that if you're a playwright who's socially engaged or who's political, you really have to assert your voice, because I think that there is an appetite that has shifted. There's an appetite for things that um, entertain. There's an appetite for, for, for things that sort of help you escape circumstances. And I really feel that my function as a playwright is to reflect back, and sometimes that reflection is difficult. When I begin writing, I write for myself. And I love that solitary experience. And then uh, what I love about playwriting is that you fold outward slowly and you introduce all of these wonderful elements, you know, beginning with, with the director and the designers and the actors. And then finally you have the, the audience. And so everyone builds upon this experience until it becomes something completely different from what you imagined. And how is that for you? I, I love that. I mean, that's why I do what I do as opposed to writing poems or writing fiction is that I love the, ex the final experience of letting go. At the very beginning of all my projections, I have this ritual. And the ritual is I give the play over to the actors and to the stage managers. And at the very end, I come back and take it. But it's theirs. And I trust that I have have um, invited really good custodians to be my collaborators. What triggers a new play? I'm not entirely sure what triggers a new play because there are moments in which I feel like I have nothing to write about. And then one day I wake up and I have an idea that just literally I can't shake or um, I've read something in the newspaper or I've encountered someone in, on the subway and that, that thing just continues to haunt me. And if it's haunted me for about a year, then I think maybe this is something that I want to spend some time with. Because you remember, particularly with a play, is that once you begin something, you're going to spend years with those characters. And um, unlike writing a novel or a piece, a piece of nonfiction, is that you have to actually be in a room with those characters. You have to see them in three dimensions. And so it has to be characters that you're really deeply invested in. How does this current uh, presidency impact your life now in, your, in the arts? He really is the manifestation of white panic. To me, it feels like the last gasp of an empire that's really hell-bent on stifling diversity and um, I feel the pressure of that, that I am part of the opposition and part of the resistance. And so I feel as a writer that I really, in this moment, have to be more assertive. And I think about it every single day is what can I do so that Donald Trump does not become normalized? <laughs> because it's not. it's not. He's not reflective of who we are as Americans. And he's not reflective of where I want to see this country going. And so as a writer, I feel everything that I do in this moment has to be part of that resistance. Mm -hmm.